For the first time since 2004, the Dallas Mavericks are 2-0 on the season. Yes, that feels like an incredibly low bar, but you know what? Facts are facts. First time since 2004, thanks to a 123-116 win in New Orleans. This was a really good game for Dallas. I'm not going to lie. This started off really, really bad defensively, giving up 41 points in the first quarter to the Pelicans. Pelicans were just blitzing them, man. They were great ball movement. They were aggressive. They were attacking very quickly. Had Dallas on their heels, but you know what? Despite Dallas giving up 72% shooting in the first quarter, Dallas flipped the script in the second in the second quarter. Dallas scores 45 points. That's the most points in a single quarter for Dallas since 2009. Dallas flips the script almost in, almost completely and takes a 72-64 edge into halftime. This this whole second quarter that turned the game that took a game that I think last year Dallas gets largely run off the court. This year they're in a better place this year because the play of KP who had 17 points at half. He had a really, really fine first half. I still am not happy with his rebounding. As you can see there, he again had just four boards. He's going to have to improve that. That That is the one thing. I don't know if it's a mental thing regarding uh, his knee or anything like that. I mean, not physically. That's why I say mental. But that that's one area that I'm still frustrated with him. But you know what? It is what it is. KP, 24 points, four boards, three assists. His his scoring in that second quarter, DeLon Wright was fantastic in that second quarter. I think he had something like at one point in, in the first half, like 16 points at the rim, basically. Just getting to the rim, slashing. His defense was phenomenal tonight as well. He forced a number of steals, including in the second half, he had like three plays in a row where he would force a steal, either strip the guy completely or just tip the ball away, lead out to a break in transition. You get a you get a Dorian Finney-Smith dunk on one of those. Another one, he sets up Seth Curry for a dagger three. And I think Curry had another one as well. So it was just, it was just a constant blitz from Dallas in this game once they got past that first jitters, the first jitters of the first quarter. And uh, hey, man, Luka Doncic, ninth career triple-double, 25 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. This is, I mean, this is a growth game for him, I think, because he played really well. And again, it's a tough environment. He had his moments last year. We know he had a game in New Orleans in the same arena where he showed out but got edged in the end by Anthony Davis, thanks to that's the infamous Dennis Smith Jr. drive to the basket and not get the shot off in time to even have a chance to win the game. So, this was this was a great moment for him. I think he took a hard foul late in the game too, where going for a loose ball, going for a rebound, what would have been his tenth rebound. He takes a shot to the face. New Orleans keeps the ball alive, but doesn't come away with the basket on that possession, and he just stuck with it. He stuck with it. He showed the same mental toughness that we saw in the first game, and he was able to build upon that. And this team, with their one-two punch of Luca and KP. Health permitting, man, there is no reason Dallas cannot lure free agents to come here at this point. And hey, shout out to Mark Cuban and Donnie Nelson. DeLon Wright, you know, we talked about in the first game, he only had two shot attempts overall. And in this game, he was the difference maker. I'll say it, like Luka and KP, they are they are the one-two punch that you expect. They should do what they did tonight pretty much every night in terms of offensive production. Again, KP, get those board numbers up, man. I mean, there's there's no reason through two games you should have eight rebounds. That's not going to cut it ever, ever, ever. But all the same, KP blocked a lot of shots tonight. I don't want to throw too much shade at him. But at the same time, DeLon Wright was the X factor to this game. His ability to slash to the basket, to get those uh, points in the paint for Dallas when things weren't falling. Yes, the three-point shooting got red hot in the second quarter. That was also a big part of what lifted Dallas but that did not carry into the second half necessarily. Things cooled off a bit as they tend to do. And it was big for Dallas to get those points in the paint and to keep the Pelicans honest in their defensive help. And uh, KP, when they did get to the rim, KP had five blocks. Like he was a beast getting blocks. Game one, he altered a lot of shots, but I think officially only came out with like one block, maybe two if he got an extra one late in the game, if he got credit for it. Here he had really six blocks, but on one they they held, upheld uh, the foul call on someone else other than KP because KP capped the shit out of that shot attempt here. So Dallas got a lot of really good production here. Again, the three guys, 
Even though Dolan Wright didn't start this game, Dallas ran it a little bit different. They put Brunson in, and they still kept Courtney Lee in, which I'm not, I'm not about that. I'm not on board with that. How does a guy start but play six minutes? Like, why, why are we starting him? Is this just a symbolic gesture, or are you somehow thinking that you're going to inflate his value to get someone to take his contract? I have no idea what that's about. But, uh, again, my man Justin Jackson does not get the nod. It's Dorian Finney-Smith. Dorian had a very up and down game, 22 minutes, 7.6 boards. That's great. 0 of 3 on three pointers, 1 of 4 at the free throw line, 3 of 8 overall. It's just, I, I don't see it, man. Dorian, he had, he had, you know, he rebounds better. And maybe that's the big factor there for him. But I felt like Justin Jackson has been better through these first two games. Justin Jackson on the game, 7 points as well. He got 13 minutes, uh, 7 points one rebound, two of five shooting, one of two on threes. The three ball has not yet really been there for Justin Jackson yet this year, but again, it's two games in, so I'm not sweating it. But Justin Jackson, I think he comes in and he provides instant offense, and maybe they do for now. Prefer that off the bench. Seth Curry got 18 minutes, eight, eight points as well. Uh, three of five shooting, two of two on threes. Again, I mentioned earlier, DeLon Wright serving up those steals, finding Seth Curry. Seth Curry splashing down threes. Big, big shots there as Dallas was kind of building its lead. I This is a huge character win for Dallas. Again, I said earlier, I don't think this team last year, obviously it's a different team uh, in terms of Dolan Wright, KP, Seth Curry, all that. I get it. But this team last year does not win these games. Like there were several times, whether they're run off the floor in the first quarter, I don't think they would have been run off the floor completely. I think they still would have crawled back into the game. But just having that maturity and that understanding of how to overcome the adversity in the second half because the pelicans man i know that they don't have zion right now and they once they have zion that is going to be a major threat i have a lot of respect for the pelicans after this and i'll admit when when i heard zion was out for a while you know six to eight weeks or whatever it is i kind of lowered my assessment of how good i think they are and i mean obviously you lose a player like that you're going to assume the team as a whole takes a little bit of a step back but they still balled out man Lonzo Ball, 33 minutes, 15 points, 8 boards, 5 assists. He didn't shoot especially great. 6 of 16 overall, 3 of 12 from 3, 0 of 2 at the line. Had a couple steals, but he was a minus 14 for the game. But he still kind of brought that steadying factor to them. The guy that really burst off the page to me, no, not Drew Holiday. He didn't have a good game. Uh, it was Brandon Ingram, man. 25 points, 8 boards, 10 of 20 from the field. So he got, a, he got you know, 20 shots to get 25 points. But I felt like he had a really good game for them. And I think this is a, a good chance for him in New Orleans to kind of break out because he, he never really felt like he had the chance in L.A. To, to develop and emerge like they needed him to, like they wanted him to. But here with the Pelicans, especially when he's paired with Zion, I think he has a real chance to actually realize some of that potential he had when L.A. drafted him. But I digress. This is about the Mavericks. Again, this is a quality win. First 2-0 start since all the way back in 2004. 15 years. 2004, to give you perspective, if you haven't been watching this channel long, I became a diehard Mavs fan in the 2002-2003 season. I had been a casual NBA fan before that, but I had just moved to Dallas from Oklahoma at that point. Obviously, the Thunder weren't a thing at the time. And I came into Dallas, didn't have a team, and turned on the TV. I think it was in the first, it wasn't the first game of the season. I want to say it was like game two or three of the season that year. And I was watching Dirk and Nash and Finley just do work. And I was just mystified. Uh, Dirk was just a completely different animal. I had seen him a little bit in pieces here and there, but that was the first time I watched like an entire game of his. And I was sold on that. So 2004, that's the next year. Well, it depends on if it was the 0304 season or the 0405 season. I digress. The point is, it's right after I started watching it. Uh, and again, the offense was there. That second quarter was magical for the Mavericks. 45 points, most points in a single quarter since 2009. That is rolling way back as well. That predates any championship for the Mavericks. So that's impressive stuff. And when you have the three-point shooting and you have the balance scoring from KP, you're going to be able to do some real damage with that. Uh, the field goals for Dallas was really strong. Luka, again, 10 of 19, very efficient. Uh, three of nine on threes, not super efficient there. He had a couple threes, but he, he banked in a dagger with about a minute 20 left to push the lead back to seven. And that New Orleans was able to cut three more points off that lead, but that really felt like the closing of the door because 
he got the rebound and then came down and banked in that three pointer. And so all in all, it's like, there's your ninth career triple double. And there's the banked three to be a dagger and to push the lead back to seven at the very end of the game. Uh, that, that took a lot of the air out of new Orleans. And I think that was huge. KP eight of 17 shooting. So he was seven of 16 in the first game, eight of 17 in the second game, finding himself a consistent rhythm, three of five shooting uh, from three free throws, a little bit hit or miss for him. He, he twice late in the game split free throws. And so he goes five of eight overall there. But again, he got five blocks. Uh, his plus minus was actually a minus three though. I'm guessing that's just because of him having to deal with Ingram and all of that. But, and uh, they also had, what was it? His, uh, Melly also had a couple plays in there late where New Orleans was just making a lot of tough, tough nose plays. They were Ding up very good defensive team. I thought, I know we scored 123, but I feel like we are potent. And especially when you consider what we did in that second quarter, I feel like it just kind of fed into the beast a little bit. So uh, I'm, I'm impressed with New Orleans. Like this is a fantastic win for Dallas, but Hey, I'm not taking anything away from New Orleans. That was a, a quality showing, uh, something worth calling out here. We still have not played Bobin through the first two games. This was not the kind of game and the style of play to roll him out there. It would not have been good. Berea has yet to play either, and we don't play Brokov either. But, you know, it is it is what it is for Dallas. Uh, other standouts, other guys for Dallas that made impacts. You had Jalen Brunson with 14 points. Yeah, you see the thing there on the whiteboard behind me. 14 points, 8 boards, and 2 assists. So that's him in the starting lineup. He made an impact as well. Dallas has a really good problem here because Brunson and DeLon Wright, both of them could very well start for this team. And I think that you're going to see a lot of that interchangeable stuff. Brunson, I think, you know, Brunson's a much better three-point shooter than DeLon Wright. But as you saw with DeLon Wright, man, that defensive skill he brings, he's probably the best, probably the best defender on the team. Like, Dodo is a good defender, uh, but DeLon Wright, and they're both versatile as well. But I think DeLon Wright certainly makes a run at being the best defender on this team. And he's so much better at slashing to the basket and finishing in traffic uh, and all of that, that I think it's just something Dallas can't overlook. So they're going to have a fun problem. You're going to probably see a lot of times this year where they're splitting uh, the point guard spot between or shooting guard, whatever they want to call it, because Luca's running the offense, but where they're going to split that setup between Brunson and DeLon Wright. I liked the balance here in this game. Both of them getting about 30 minutes. Brunson got 29, and it looks like DeLon Wright got 32. Uh, 8 of 12 for DeLon Wright. 4 of 4 at the line. Brunson, 6 of 11. So they both had their moments. They both absolutely had their moments. And it's just one of those things where uh, if Dallas is going to build on this, they've got they've got a, a matchup with the very good Portland Trailblazers on Sunday. We are planning on running a game companion that night, Any and I, uh, so look for that. But that that is the plan. But w when that matchup comes around for Dallas, it is at home, which helps a little bit. Portland's 0-1 right now. They haven't had their second game. But that is going to be like, this was a real character game for Dallas. But Portland, I think, is going to be a real measuring stick to tell us real early in the season, okay, how good are we? Where are we at? I still have con uh, concerns about the defense. Obviously, that first quarter allowing 72% shooting for uh, the Pelicans. I keep wanting to say Portland for some reason just because I'm thinking P for Pelicans. Uh, against the Pelicans, 72%, 41 points. That was atrocious. But, hey, they, they turned around the ship. They righted the ship. And from then on, not only did they immediately answer that with 45 points of their own, but they pretty much controlled every quarter after that. I mean, yes, technically – the New Orleans won the third quarter because they took an eight-point deficit and they cut it, I think, down to two going into that fourth quarter. So New Orleans did win the third quarter, but, you know, it is what it is. Dallas ends up winning this game by seven. So really, Dallas only lost the second half by one point. Uh, and for that kind of turnaround after that first quarter, I think that is a major, major uh, accomplishment for them. So big props to Dallas. Luka Doncic continues his beastlyhood. Uh, I think he's going to be an all-star this year, and I think it definitely helps that he's listed as a backcourt player this year, unlike being listed as a frontcourt player like last year. Yes, you have like Kevin Durant out of the West now, and so that opens up a spot. Plus, KD is not going to play probably uh, at all this year. Well, I would assume. Uh, and so that takes him off the board. 
But if he was still, still a front court player, he'd still have to contend with like LeBron and Anthony Davis, and it's crowded at that position in the West. So being listed as a backcourt player, I think, opens up some more things for him now. And uh, KP, whew, you know, he made the all-star team in the East the year that he got hurt. He didn't get to play in the game because he went down with the injury, but that that definitely, offensively speaking, KP's mobility was off the charts good in this game, whether it was moving his feet on defense and getting blocks, you know, contesting shots and all that. Not even just that. I mean, he was capping shots. And hey, shout out to Seth Curry as I'm talking about blocks, man. He had a fantastic block late in that game where he just basically scooped the ice cream off the top and then saved the ball from going out of bounds and let a Dallas break. That was that was a serious play late in that fourth quarter. So KP's playing well, man. I'm I'm encouraged by everything except the rebounding. He's, he's rebounding. It's a super small sample size. I understand. But he's rebounding at a career worst rate right now. I think he's like a career 6.2 rebounds guy. And he's obviously at four right now per game. He's going to have to get that number up. But assuming he does that, I'm thrilled with everything I see from this team. I mean, there are still things they can address. There are still things that they're going to have to do if they want to if they want to get back to the playoffs. Defense is going to need some help. I think rebounding still needs a little bit of help as well. But I feel pretty good with where things are at. So 2-0, let's enjoy it. Uh, until next time, though, that's going to do it for my time. Check us out Sunday. Come back to the channel Sunday. We will. We plan. I will post an update letting you know for sure. I'm coming back into town that day from way out of town in Texas. Uh, so I will be getting back in town and hopefully running a game companion for the Portland Trail Blazers game. I believe that's a 6 o'clock tip Sunday. But that's going to do it for my time, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.